All right, we are streaming live on Facebook. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another Wednesday night live stream here on the Facebook Professionals group. So good to see you, all of your smiling faces. I see, uh, yeah, I see some of my favorite people out there. So welcome. Hey, yeah, I was just thinking about how when I started out doing frameless shower enclosures, you know, as kind of my main thing. Back in those days, I was doing, um, using channel primarily for my fixed panels. And I think it was just, uh, it seemed like the easiest thing to do. There, there was definitely a lot more room for, you know, kind of fudging it, you know, if things were out a little bit or, you know, if, if my glass wasn't coming in, you know, made just right little bit more opportunity to compensate, right, for, for outages and stuff like that. And uh, it just seemed to be, you know, the easiest way to do it. And what I found was that um, if I suggested that to the customer, you know, most most of the time they'll just go with your recommendation. You know, um, sometimes, you know, people will be like, oh, I'd really prefer to have, you know, the clamps. And it'd be like, okay, yeah, no problem. But my... Um, my initial, you know, offering would be for channel, and um, and I I went with that for a long time, and then as I started doing more of the bracket type, you know, installations, glass clamps, what I found was that it was really easier for me. It was like kind of faster because um, well, I was feeling more confident, you know, about my measurements. My glass was coming out more accurate. And so I really didn't need quite as much wiggle room for my glass. But also I just found that it was like I was drilling less holes and it was um, just faster install. And it was generally what um, customers seemed to prefer, especially like designers, um, builders, contractors. I mean, they you know, they generally were looking for that. Now, it's still just kind of a, personal preference thing. And sometimes people still do prefer, uh, you know, the channel. Um, and I think in a lot of instances, it really is like a little bit more, you know, um, a low profile. I mean, it's just a little, you know, half inch or three quarter inch channel rather than, you know, a big two by two clamp. But anyway, I thought, wow, well, that might be a good topic for um, for tonight's discussion. You know, I, I think we I'm sure we've talked about this before, but um, that's a it's a pretty um, fundamental part, you know, of what we do. It's like, what do you prefer to do? Do you prefer to use channel or clamps? Why? You know, and uh, is there a difference? You know, is there a difference in price? I don't know. What do you think? Tell me about it. I started up. Who's first? Uh oh. Tim's Tim's on here twice, so that's. I don't know. I don't know how I did that, but anyway. I'm getting an echo. Impressive. You're getting reverb. Your mic is picking up your mic. Like uh, your speakers are picking up your mic. Your mic is picking yeah, up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's because you're on here twice. Somehow you need to. Let's see. Maybe um, that maybe to log out, did. log back into the meeting, Tim. Let me log back in. I'm going to put you in. The, I'm going to do that. Okay, let's try that now. Try it again. Can you hear me now? Is that better? Or yep, I fixed it. That's good. Okay. No, I started out with channel, and then did that for a while, and then I switched all to clips, and never went back. And it's a lot quicker, I think. You know, I do. I've got a little bit more in depth answer. Is it, I channel made me feel safer early on, um, but like we, I've kind of tried to create like signature looks or like what like the Britton Tilson look, um, kind of a dumbed down version of what Bill was talking about with um, kind of renaming and creating the showers as like a like a my shower door product directly. Um, I don't have quite as much control as Bill does uh, since he's handling the whole process. But so we go with a, my, my preference. Now we'll do whatever the homeowner or contractor, whoever that is, customer wants to do. 
but our preferred look is a channel bottom with all vertical edges being clipped, whether that be a slip clip or a mounted clip. Um, that started with a personal preference. I like channel on the bottom uh, because I think it disappears when it's low better than clips do. Uh, now, it depends on finish, too, because your brush nickels, your silvers, they're going to disappear more down low versus like a black or a bronze. So if we're in the dark realm, a lot of times I go fully clipped because I feel like that does hide a little bit more. So I'm, I'm looking for kind of that disappearing bottom to me. I don't want to draw the eye down when I'm looking at a shower or frameless shower. I want everybody to look you know, directly into the shower. So by keeping the clips off the bottom or, you know, anything that stands out down low, I feel like it makes it feel more frameless. And that's personal opinion. I'm sure there's people out there that go, no, you're putting channel on it. It's not frameless, but sell a lot of showers. So um, I, that's our signature look. So we, we ask people, do you want our signature look? Um, and as we, you know, we're still remodeling our showroom. As we get that done, we'll have like the Britton Tilson signature look for, anything you know that's going to have a fixed panel uh and then you'll have a fully clipped and a fully channeled look to look at as well um but i i, I if you look at the pictures that we post on our social media the majority of the ones you'll see will be channeled on the bottom and then i don't i try not to use channel on the verticals unless i'm wrapping or gridding a shower or something like that so billy Britt's answer is both that's my go-to Right on. Thanks for thanks for sharing that. Who's next? I was taught on uh, on uh, clamps, uh, so that's what I've always done for the most part. Um, channel doesn't seem as easy to me. Uh, just again because I was taught on on clips, but. Uh, Clamps uh, can get much, much easier when, or much easier than uh, channel when you're talking, um, you know, a knee wall uh, and you've got inside and outside angles and all of that. Um, that's real, real easy to get it wrong. Uh, and those 45s better be 45 um, because otherwise it goes from a nice job to a hack job in a hurry. Uh, so for me, it just makes sense to do clamps. Most of my customers have said, uh, no, I don't want a framed shower. Well, it's not a framed shower. It's a frameless with channel. Yeah, I don't want a framed shower. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> we'll go with clamps. That's fine. Uh, but that's where I stand on it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, use, I use both as well um and, and kind of like billy was talking about like it, it for, for me i mean obviously it all comes down ultimately it's the, the homeowner or the customer's decision you know um i can i can suggest i can offer but i can't make the decision for them um but there's certain situations and certain instances where I prefer one over the other. For instance, if I'm doing a door and panel on a tub, uh, a fiberglass tub, I'll always use channel on the bottom of the panel because I personally don't like drilling in to the tub deck. Um, I'll just double face tape the channel down. You know, I'll set my panel with a wall clamp and silicone and everything. Um, situations like that, where I don't even offer the clamp. Um, if I'm doing a door notch panel return, I prefer to do those in clamps. I can do them quicker. Uh, I think they look nicer. Um, but again, if, if the homeowner prefers channel, I'll do it. I don't, I don't change the price when it's that type of layout because I feel like for me, it's a little more labor doing the channel on that type of layout uh, than it is for me to set it with clamps. I, I can just do the clamps easier. So uh, less angles I'm messing around with, cutting on the miter saw and, and trying to get everything nice and tight, um, situations like that. I mean, as far as vertical channel, I, I couldn't tell you the last time I did vertical channel going up the wall. Um, I think the last time I did it was when we, we wrapped 
we wrapped a door and panel in, in matte black. That's the, the last time I did that. Um, I don't personally like that look. Um, and I usually do charge more for clamps. Um, for instance, if I'm doing a door and panel and, you know, they want three clamps on the panel as opposed to one clamp and, and bottom channel, like the price is going to go up. Uh, cause I got to pay extra for glass fabrication and the hardware is going to cost me a little more. So, you know, I'm not going to eat the difference of that, you know, it's up to the customer and, and I always give them, you know, two prices and I, and I send them to two pictures, you know, here's a picture of it with the bottom channel. Here's a picture of it with clamps, you know, price a price B and now it's up to them. Um, so my answer also is both depending on situation layout, you know, all the above. So are you saying that you, you charge a little bit more for clamps than channel? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I find that um, channel, so what I'll do is I'll just offer them at the same price. Um, I, and I that's just because I find that working with channel is actually a little bit more labor intensive. And I think that um, as far as cost goes, as far as my cost for materials, um, there's probably not that much difference um, mm. in the materials. I don't know. I mean, I probably should charge more for a channel because the amount of time it takes to cut it out, and like you're saying, I mean, it takes a little bit of skill um, to, to, you know, if you've got miters and stuff to get those nice and tight and make them look clean, make everything line up where it's really tricky is when you've got like a bull nose or something and you've got to either notch glass or you've got to notch, you know, um, a bull nose or something. And then working that with, um, with channel is like, that's really, it's hard to make that look. Or if you have a bench seat that has a, a slope to it, then you got to, you know, get the right angle going over the bench seat. That's a pain in the neck, too. Yeah. Like, for me, my my supplier that I get most of my shower doors from, um, I mean, they charge me twenty six twenty five per notch cutout. So, on a panel with... I, I offer the first notches free like if they want bottom channel and a wall clamp i don't charge extra for that wall clamp that's just included but if they want clamps all around that panel you know it's another you know 50 bucks for me um just in glass fabrication so you know plus the hardware which is minimal um you know you're talking 12 15 bucks depending on the finish but yeah i pass i pass that price right along yeah, you know, actually, I hadn't even thought about that, the actual um, notches, the cutouts for the for the clamp. So, yeah, there there's that extra expense for sure. Which so is crazy the, because it's the same as a hinge cutout. The cost of a notch cutout is the same as a hinge cutout, which I, I don't quite understand, but I don't know. Maybe, it is what it maybe is. Bill, maybe Bill can weigh in on that. Hmm. Why, would, why would they be the same, Bill? Takes the same amount of time for the program or program that water jetter is CNC, and it's the same amount of time on the machine. It's more the machine time, not the size of the notch. If you're doing a like a door notched panel that goes up on a bench, it takes you just as long to cut that notch panel out as it does doing a hinge notch. Now we do have a, a bigger charge for a corner notch because you tend to break some of those big ones in fabrication. But you know, I'm listening to everybody here, and there's just so many variables like does everybody allow the door to swing in and out or if you're doing channels you do out only and the reason i say that is you got to trust your fabricator to get you very accurate dimensions of what you fab if you're not using channel you've got to be pretty darn accurate now if you don't use if if you want the door to swing out only and you put a uh, h channel a small h on the fixed panel for the door to rest against, then you have to leave a gap in there. Uh, if you don't use it, you allow the door to swing in and out, and you want a small gap between the door and panel, you've got like no play 
on your hinge. If that door starts slipping out of the hinge, now you're glass on glass. So now do you start leaving a bigger gap between the door and the panel for that? And if you don't have any play in any channel, it's gonna be an awful big cock joint along the wall if you've got to try and get that panel out um, so you have a very close gap along the door. So, I mean, channel is our go-to and we will use it everywhere we can, but we do a ton of tear outs of the frame doors and reinstall a frameless in its place. And we're gonna try and follow the path that the old door was there because you have the, the staining when you take out the old door. So we wanna mm -hmm. cover that up and cover up the holes from the frame door. So channeling has always been our go-to, but we'll do both. I, I think it's depending on the model of your business, if you're doing pr primarily builder work and new construction and you don't have to worry about removals, then uh, clips and clamps are a good option, but it depends what the rest of the configuration is like. So Chris, I don't think it's a, it's not a one answer gonna fit all. It's, there is personal preference. The other thing is over time, I mean, I've seen a beautiful looking door two years later look terrible because the caulking, which is all exposed in clamps, discolors and it's, it's a mess. And it doesn't discolor because of the caulking, it's because of the cleaning solutions they use in it. And it starts getting a chemical reaction as not a bacterial or a fungal, it's an actual chemical reaction and it starts turning the caulking black. Well, when you're using channel, you don't see it because our channeling, we have a caulking trough underneath. So we're not doing exposed beads of caulking. So channel hides that. Uh, and then if you have irregular thresholds, like there are people that still put their thresholds down with individual tiles as opposed to a one piece sill. Now, and especially when you start going vertically up the wall, if you get any kind of rough tile, it makes for a really sloppy look. No matter how good of a cop job you do, you're looking at all of the irregularities of the tile, a, a wider cock joint, a narrower one, even if it's a beautiful cock joint, you just see that. Whereas if you put a channel, it's all hidden. So there's, there's a lot of different advantages. Yeah. You know, again, it, I, I think like Brian said, ultimately it's up to the customer what they want. Anybody can do anything you want, but I just find that in the field to get a higher percentage of completions, you have a higher percentage rate of a satisfied customer when you're using channel because you can snuggle that panel out of the channel and get a tighter gap between the door. Just a thought. Right. Yeah. Those are all good points. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, if you've got, if, if your tile is, not really very plumb or level or whatever, but it's super straight. No one will ever see that because you're just going to cut your glass out of square. It's going to match perfectly. Right. But if you've got a tile job that's got a big bow or a big dip in it, you, you really can't cut your glass. I mean, I guess you could if money was no object and time was no, you know, I mean, if you could yeah, spend as much it. money and as time as you wanted, you can make patterns for everything, right? Go around every, you know, every dip and divot, you know, but usually you can't. And channel does a great job at, at compensating for that. So it's like, it really hides those things. And in a situation where the tile is like that, it's got a big, you know, belly in it or something, you know, I'll tell people, hey, the only way you're gonna hide that is with, with channel. I mean, there's, you know, if we have to do this with clamps, it's gonna, you're gonna see that. In fact, the glass is going to really draw attention to it because it's super straight. Right, there's a couple other pr practical reasons too that, I mean, I've always found. I don't know how many of you guys have a frameless shower door in your own house and you use it, but you know that when you're putting clamps vertically on the sidewall, it's a pain in the ass when you squeegee it. And no matter how good you do, it's like when your car just comes out of the car wash you go down the street and then the water starts dripping out of all the insignias and all the little nooks and crannies. Same thing happens in your shower. As good as you squeegee it down, two seconds later, the water's dripping out of that clamp on the side. It just does. The water has the property of attachment, attaches, and it starts releasing. And all of a sudden you get the drip. 
when you have a, a channel going down the side, everything is vertical. If it's going to attach, it's going to run all the way down to the bottom. So your glass is going to look good. So again, there's no right or wrong answer. Uh, it's a good topic, Chris, So because there's so many variables that come into play to make that decision, what's going to work the best. Just as a company, we just do so many that channel gives us the best opportunity to get completed jobs in. Like you get customers that complain about a caulk joint as good as you think it is. Uh, you have a lot more exposed caulk on clamps, a lot more. Right. Right. You know, and it's, you know, it's personal preference too. You know, I mean, if uh, some people think that, you know, the clamps make it look more frameless. And then some mm -hmm. people think that the clamps are actually more visible because they're bigger and bulkier. And especially when it comes to, um, when you're using Chrome hardware, one thing I've noticed is like, if you use channel on a Chrome enclosure, um, that that shiny Chrome is like, it acts like a mirror. Right. And it like disappears. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's really crazy. I've shown people pictures of it. Like, look at this picture. It looks like there's no channel at all. And it does, you know, because it reflects the tile and it like kind of disappears. It's pretty cool. We've had customers complain about clamps after they came to us and said, that's what we want. We don't want to listen. Then they complain about the clamps and the term that that's used, they say it looks like brace face, which is like when you get a, an adolescent that gets braces and you see all the brackets on their teeth, you know, it performs the job, it does well, but your eye goes right to it. And that takes away from a frameless door. You want your eye to go through it and not be the center of attention. And it's almost like when we try and talk people out of putting towel bars on your doors, it completely defeats the idea of being frameless. You know, you want the visibility, the openness. Now, there's many times you need to do it because of practical purposes. There's no other place to put the towel. But for the most part, if they truly want frameless, you really don't want a towel bar blocking it. So it depends on the rest of the awareness of what else is happening in the bathroom, right? 100% what I was talking about with visibility at the bottom. <clears throat> when I see clips at the bottom, I don't, just me personally, looking at shower after shower after shower, it makes my eyes drop to the bottom of the shower. Yeah. Um, I don't like running the channel vertically because of um, what other people have made the point of your miters, getting your miters right. Um, some of my guys are really good at that, doing their deductions, getting their miters right, and some of my guys are not. So when I run my bottom channel, it's typically, you know, just a, a straight flat cut to flat cut. Um, and then if I have a knee wall or a seat or something like that, I'm rarely going to run channel on a vertical to a horizontal. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to silicone that area if I can, and then travel back to the, the vertical and clip it to the wall to give it stability. So I'm trying to kind of accommodate both uh, problems, I guess you would say. I don't know if they're necessarily problems because some guys like channel, some don't. Um, but I'm trying to alleviate things like we talk about with hinges slipping. I'm trying mm -hmm. to figure out a way to alleviate issues that I have come up uh, with my guys on site uh, before they get on site. And I've found that using the channel on the bottom allows us a little bit of room to lift and move panels uh, where we don't have that with, a, with, a, with clips on the bottom. So it gives us that little bit of fudge room there. I, I love it on the vertical for the point that Bill makes that you have more room to adjust your gaps uh, along the, you know, the different pieces of glass. So I do like it for that, but I, I think when it runs vertically, it does give a little bit more of a framed look. So, it, it, but it is, that's, a, that's the whole thing. There's no right or wrong. I, I like to look situation to situation, but to fix it for us, I said, here's our go-to, like here's our style. I can send you picture after picture of this. Um, but if you've seen the Pinterest or you've seen the Instagram picture that you want to look exactly like that, we can do that as well. So it's, again, trying to fix problems before we get on site uh, just from past history, you know, doing them over and over and over and going, well, that didn't turn out well. We weren't able to get our miters perfect because the front of the seat poking into the glass a little bit and the top of the seat was, you know, pitched for, for water flow. So we weren't able to get all those miters as nice as we wanted to. So let's just stop. Let's stop putting channel there. You know, we'll keep it on the bottom. So it's nice and smooth down there. 
um, but we'll just stop putting channel on the on the vertical of a knee wall or a seat. So it's just trial and error of figuring out what you think works best. Um, and then your guys get in a rhythm or you get in a rhythm of, you know, what you're comfortable with and you do it over and over and over and, and, and they make less and less mistakes. So. Yeah. You know, I, I kind of like your take on that earlier, Billy, when you were kind of talking about branding and just kind of having like, okay, this is kind of our look, you know, this is kind of our brand. Um, and I think that's a pretty good approach towards that. And just like, Hey, this is how we, we like to do it. Use the channel at the bottom, uh, use clamps on, on the vertical edges. This is why, you know, these are the pros and cons of that, you know, and, and if you've got a good explanation, the customers most times are probably just going to go with your recommendation. They've got a strong feeling about it. You know, they'll let you know. And of course, you know, we'll do, we'll give them whatever they want as long as it's safe. Right. You know, as long as we feel like we can stand behind it. Um, but uh, that, those are some, some great explanations. It's a, it's a, the reason really I wanted to talk about this is because there may be some people who are kind of newer to this, um, this phase, you know, of glazing or whatever, people are getting into frame showers more and haven't in the past and may want wonder why. I mean, why do you do this? Why do you do that? Or why do people prefer this? And one thing that I think is coming up that I'm hearing too is that, you know, it's it, there's a difference too if you're like just a one man show and you're out doing the installation yourself like I am or like Brian Schwartz does, you know. <laughs> And it's something totally different if you've got a bunch of crews out there and, um, you know, you need a real consistent product and you're not the one doing a reinstallation, you know, and that's going to play into, you know, how are you going to approach this too? So, um, yeah. Who else? One of the, okay. There's another, um, part of this, Chris, that that's interesting, depending on what finish your hardware is. You know, most channeling is made of aluminum and most of your hinges are, are made of brass. So the plating, the coloring is, is off. So if you're getting it to a specialty finish like a polished nickel or, you know, the satin brass, you may have no choice because a lot of the channeling doesn't really mass, match with the hinges. So you're better off going with the clamp for that whole series and that whole setup just because of the color match. So color plays plays a role too. It's not just the look of it, but what particular finish are you working with? Excellent point. Yeah. I would say that most of our out of the box finishes, your champagne bronzes, your satin brass, um, yeah. antique brasses, those like that. We, we rarely do channel on those um, because one, I don't want to sit around. Uh, all the excess is just going to sit there and take up space. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do one of those out of every hundred showers. Whereas you know, 50 out of the 100 is going to be chrome and 40 is going to be brushed nickel. Um, so that definitely plays into it, especially in the satin brass. I haven't had satin brass channel and I don't know how long. I don't know about anybody else, but <laughs> it's been almost, you know, impossible to come by. I mean, it's impossible to come by, period. But um, and the channel has been super hard. So that's a great point is when you get out of your your standard stuff, I'm, I'm probably hard clips because I want to get that hardware in, use it for that shower, and I don't want it. I don't want to hold it in the building. Exactly. So that's a great point. Exactly. Yeah. And you want them all to match. You don't want to mix vendors. You don't want to go to portals and get this and get um, your hinges from Sierra Lawrence and those two colors don't match either. Yep. yep. Had that conversation yeah. today about satin brass and champagne bronze that they're, they're in the same family, but they're definitely not the same finish. I had a customer argue with me about they could get it out of Miami from a supplier down there. And I'm like, that's awesome, but it has to match the cutouts that I'm using on the glass that I already have sitting in my building. So you know, if you can guarantee the cutouts will be the same from manufacturer I've never heard of in Miami, sure, send it up here and we'll, we'll put it in. But yeah. uh, like, well, what about this? You know, this company uses, I'm like, now I'll, I'll order your clips, your handle and your, your hard, your door hardware from three different manufacturers if you want me to, but I can guarantee you when it gets in there, it's not going to match. So if you want to go that route, then we'll do that. But, you know, here's where we're at. We're doing matte black because, we can't get the satin brass and everything I need to do the steam shower. So, you know, so yeah, you're, you're hundred percent right. Is there that different hue makes a big difference uh, when it gets in a bathroom and trying to explain that to somebody seems like a no win situation sometimes. 
Yeah, you really stop and look at, just take a look at brushed nickel, which is, you know, you do a lot of brushed nickel. If you're getting your, your hardware from different vendors, even the, the brushing is different. The brush stroking, when they put it on the wire wheel, if they don't have the same uh, tinsel strength of that wheel go there, you're gonna get deeper grooves, which gives you a different color look. Uh, yep. And then the nickel, when they dip it in, you know, they have to be very, very consistent with the amount of uh, nickel cadmium that they put in the dipping tank to, to get you the right color. So mixing vendors is very, very, very difficult on especially finishes. And, and that, I'm just bringing it back to your question about channel or clamps. You know, those are other things that you have to consider when deciding, you know, what application you're going to do. Has anybody had to, uh, ran into customers that are familiar with the fact that like C.R. Lawrence's chrome doesn't match when you go channel to clips and hinges and stuff? All the time. Yeah, we make them aware of it, but I don't use C.R. Lawrence channel. I was going to say, <laughs> you have other options. <laughs> we yeah. don't bring it up, but we have had a few designers who somebody said something to them at some point and they go, well, the, the channel's not chrome, is it? And I'm like, ah, oh, son of a bitch. No. So, you, you know, but, we have to go to the clips to make it match. So it's, you know, you get, you get, uh, you get, you get handcuffed there every once in a while. It's pretty rare, but, but I've ran into that a few times. When I was doing a lot with Tom Whitaker, we were doing chrome on brass. So we would, we would get raw brass channeling, send it out, get it polished and chrome plated. And I'll tell you, it was absolutely gorgeous, but I don't know, it was something like $75 a length at the time. And that was 20 years ago. So I bet you it's a 200 bucks a length right now yeah we used yeah. to do that yeah you get some really nice chrome on brass and it's beautiful yeah, just beautiful that gives, the, that gives the look of the old style like heavy yeah. showers right yeah because i know tom's really big on those kind of old school classic showers yep he's got a name for them but i can't think of off the top of my head but those things are i don't know if anybody's ever seen one the original one of those that have like the grids in the top of them with it looks kind of you know kind of polished nickel chrome mix almost those things those things are sweet. I mean, they're old and heavy and annealed glass and everything else that they don't need to be, but those things are wild to, to, to check out. I've seen a few of those in some of our older homes in town. Yeah, they are. And they're coming back and, you know, you, you call them vintage doors, I guess is a good way of putting it. Uh, not for everybody. That's certainly not production homes. It's got to be the, the right client. But Tom's got a, a great array of uh, finishes that they have. And he's got a nice plater in his backyard. So that helps too. And, and what he does, he sends everything out. He'll bring the hinges, the handles and the channel and get it all plated at the same place. Hmm. So he's not trying to match. Yeah. He's just gonna have it all, all dipped at the same time. So years ago, we did a fire department in the Monterey airport. We bought him from American Shower Door and they yeah. were brass, and they were, you know, chrome plated. Heavy, 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 and that was forty years ago. <laughs> was anybody priced any of those recently? No, I've priced a few of them. They're like putting cars on your shower. Yeah, I did a, I did a house. And they wanted tub enclosures that were um, chrome, or mm -hmm. yeah, no polished nickel. Mm -hmm. And I says the only way you get them is through American Shower Door, and those those things were not cheap, and they they went for it, you know. You can get them from Tom Whitaker yeah. at, yeah. at Mister Shower Door in Connecticut. He does. Well, this is down in Southern California. So. Oh, he'll wholesale them and ship them to. Oh yeah, but uh, no, it was in those things. You you wrap the headers, you know, tape them off before you cut them, and oh yeah, you don't want to screw those things up one bit, you know. <laughs> Yeah, we yep. used to have to put clear fingernail polish over the end of it just because it would oxidize. You're cutting raw brass, yeah. it would oxidize. So you'd have to watch what caulking you used with it and uh, make sure you seal all the edges. In the end run, they really didn't look that great. <laughs> no. The last one I did, they, they did a, uh, I had a, a, a family in town that did a remodel, a 1920s remodel in their basements. They had an old school movie theater put in. They wanted the bathroom to match. Everything was... Uh, pol polished nickel-ish, you know, kind of that old school look, all the push button lights, light switches in. So we priced out one of the, the old brass showers, not old, the classic brass shower, new one, because um, they wanted the look of that gridded top. 
and uh, I gave them an option for a you know a heavy glass wrapped and polished nickel versus that one. And I think the polished nickel one was about a thirty-five hundred dollar shower, and the classic true brass was about ten thousand dollars. So it was a it was, I mean it's it's an investment if you want to go that route, but it's a, it's a look that you know even the feel of it it feels like it's half inch glass weight wise you know, but you're not dealing with all that. And that gridded look is a, it's a really cool, really cool look, but I've never had anybody pull the trigger on one. Yeah, a couple weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, I, I had a customer on our old house. He had removed the door and he asked me to reinstall. The door was from the 1920s. He told me it was like uh, stainless steel, but I don't think so. I think it was brass. I, I, this is my, so what I know, I ask you guys, do you, do you guys think it has any chance to be standing still? No. 1920s door? I don't think. Did it have a nice shine on the outside? No. It was completely oh, it was, a mess. First oh. place, it was regular glass, too. <laughs> yeah, it probably was not tempered, right? It was probably annealed. A, I don't right. know. I don't know it's, if it was tempered. I don't think so. Annealed. I, it didn't exist I, back then. I guess it would be yeah. some sort of version of brass, but uh, that's just a guess, I mean, without looking at it. Yeah, that would be what I would say. I, I doubt if it's stainless steel. I doubt very much. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. Yeah. Um, the other thing, Vitor, when you have guys take that out and you know it's that old, just make sure they're careful because if it's annealed, that's a dangerous piece. Yeah. They break that glass, they can get really hurt. Not even annealed, right? Just a float or plate. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Plate glass. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and put old oh, man. I mean, I've I pulled some showers here in in Santa Cruz that are um, wire glass. Yeah. Oh yeah. Not that unusual, actually. Yeah. So what was that popular? Like the fifties? I mean, I it, think that was like sixties. Yeah, 60s. like kind of the it? original safety glass, I suppose. It was still the here in the sixties. Hmm. Yeah, and Peter, it's not that unusual in Santa Cruz to run across like a shower that old, man. It's yeah. Like, crazy hey Vitor, thanks for joining it's good to see a new face on here yeah thank you happy new year everyone thanks pleasure to have you guys here a hey, quick question again uh, uh still regarding this door uh what kind of stuff that i can use to polish to bring the shine back that one you're brand? talking about for yeah you got to find out what the material is first yeah so guessing it uh, I believe it's brass. If it's brass, they sell a brass polish. There's um, go to the boating supply, you know, mm. for their outdoor chrome and boat. They sell a really nice paste that you can put on a buffing wheel and buff it. It's the the fleets one, or even mothers. That's what I was going to say. Mothers, yeah, mothers, yeah, mothers but too. Yeah, I'm not sure of the brand. Most the box? like. You go to a West Marine or something, they'll have that. Got it, got it. Mm -hmm. I'll try that. Thank you. The auto parts store, you can go to get mothers, and I use that on my boat rims, and they're works great. There you go. Nice boat team. <laughs> yeah, that's my putt putt. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Yeah, you're welcome. I see there's another one named Dean here that I haven't seen before. That's oh, Dean. Baby. Dean McLean. What's going on, okay. Dean? How you been, man? <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> yeah, how's it going, guys? Really good. good. I just yeah. lost you again. Yeah, where, are you from, where are you from, Dean? Yeah, from uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba. Hey, all right. We up north here. I like it. Yeah. Up in the warm weather. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> terrible place. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's home. Welcome. Hey, Chris, yeah, can you, you hear me? I do hear you, man. It's good I to just, see you. I, I, Chris, I just got kicked out again. Oh, did you? Well, the, you best be on your best behavior, man. I don't know. I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> hey, Chris, did you get an answer from that guy that was asking all the questions about trying to put a door up with the uh, vent pipe? And then you said, well, are you a shower door installer or just a oh, customer? No, he never responded to my question. I had to boot him. Yeah, I, I didn't see any response. I looked at it and said, it was what, previous member? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I decided yeah, I, he wasn't actually a shower door. Person. I had a guy yeah. ask me uh, today on one of my posts about coming to his house to do some showers. Not, you know, it's that's out of my realm or my area, but I'll go wherever to do showers. 
if he wants me to do them because he was bad mouthing everybody in the area he was from. So I, yeah. so yeah, don't boot him, Chris. Just leave him. The guy <laughs> boot him until you're done with the job. Then I'm booting him. <laughs> this is not the yellow pages, man. <laughs> hey, yeah, I don't mind. You know, if people are getting work, I don't mind. But it's, pretty, it's funny. You know, pictures brings eyes, man. When, when people come to to join up, uh, it just we ask them two questions. It's like the first question is, how are you associated, you know, with the glass and the glass industry? You know, are you a shop owner? Are you an installer? Do you have some other position in a glass shop? And the other one is just, do you agree to follow the rules? And all you have to do to get into the group is just answer both of those questions, you know, but you have to answer them honestly, you know? So if I find out you lied to me to get into the group, because really you're shopping for a shower door. And you're not really, you know, a glass guy. Yeah. Got to give you the boot. Get the so, boot. So be warned out there. You can, you can boot him now. I've, he's got my name and information. You can feel free to boot him. <laughs> all right. I know. I see all of you guys here. You guys are all pros. So you're, you're safe. Yeah, hey, surprise, bro. surprise. One of these guys, you're going to find out we're just a random homeowner that just has too much glass knowledge. <laughs> Hey, Brian, you were mentioning about how much you get charged for a notch. Yes. How much do they charge you for a notch? Like 26, a, 26 25 How about for holes? Depending on size, uh, for like a half-inch hole, um, handle 50 hole. Yeah, right. handle holes, 10 50 All right. <laughs> yeah, that well, sounds about right, huh? I, I, guess you're, about the same. Who's I hope supplier? you're paying a lower square foot price then. I, hope so. I mean, uh, I don't know. Lower than, <laughs> lower than what? Well, I mean, that's a high, high charge on the fab end. But sometimes okay. guys do that because, you know, they charge lower if you're doing three eighths clear and maybe it's four dollars a square foot, but maybe they're charging you three fifty instead of four, you're making it up on buying the glass without fab. And then if you need fab, they really charge you for it. Who's, like your my, Who's your supplier? I go to Eastern Glass Resources for most of my shower doors. Um, they're pretty comparable to other suppliers in the area. They may be a little bit higher, um, yeah. but I never have to worry about the quality yeah. or, you know, concerned about is my glass coming in heavy, light, scratched, or my hole's going to have chips and... You know, the there's a I pay, I guess essentially I basically pay a little extra for peace of mind. Um All right. it's okay. which is yeah, but I mean like to give you an idea, like three eighths clear tempered um is six eighteen, I think, a square foot. They may have they may have gone up a little bit. It may be six thirty three now. There were a few price increases. Now you got polishing per inch also? Yeah. Yeah, polishing per inch is uh, that I'm not 100% sure about. You got a pretty good memory for pricing, though. I mean, I couldn't tell you the price I'm paying per square foot and per notch and per hole. I mean, that's well, those, those notching good, prices dude. are way high. <laughs> yeah, they are. But you, see, it depends. You have to look at the whole picture. Yeah. You know? Unless you're getting a good price on the glass, those things are way hey. high. You know what gets me, too, is they... They're, the energy surcharges are 16%. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, we just got so, increased all manufacturers this week on energy surcharge up here. So we're anywhere from 12 on the low end to 16 on the high end. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. our from the float plant, we got a surcharge, and it went up per truck. It went from $1,300 up to $2,200 per truck. Wow. Oh. Yeah. That's just to get it from North Carolina to us. That's their surcharge. But the wow. surcharge isn't a trucking cost. It's a combination of trucking and the energy that they need to make the glass. Yeah. You telling me I need to buy a truck, Bill Dobman? Yeah, you might. You can with those surcharges. <laughs> I might be able to run one and make a little money. Yeah, no kidding. Sometimes it's easier, right? You, you Is yours coming out of uh, like Lumberton, Fayetteville? Is that where you're getting yours? No, Lauren Burke. Yeah, so it's yeah, it's the Greater Fayetteville area, Lauren okay. Yeah, so it's uh, uh, Pilkington. 
Yeah. Yeah, nice. we've got two that are really close. These are ones in Rock Hill, South Carolina, not Pilkington. And then the other one's in, in uh, Lumberton, or not Lumberton. Uh, uh, I call it Fayetteville, but it's not actually. You know, do you know why you have them there? Um, I would guess raw material would be my understanding in yeah. the area. Good Easily. supply of good sand. Yeah. Yep. Exactly right. Like supposedly we're fought that the, the plants are far enough from the coast, but close enough to the coast to get what they need uh, yeah. in those areas. Yeah, they figured that out years ago and they built that because it's, uh, I don't know, a couple, of, I don't know about a couple billion, but I know more than a billion dollars now to build a float plant. Take so much yeah. space and all the equipment going in. I think I said it before, but if any of you guys have never had a chance to go to a float plant, you need to go to one. I've been to manufacturers all over the place and manufacturers are nice to see and see the different layouts that they have, but going to a float plant is an experience all on its own. See it's a like raw material coming in and turning into glasses is pretty wild. It's basically yeah. like going into hell, really. It's, it's hot, the vats, really hot. And then when the glass comes out at ribbon, it's still hot. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, gotta coolest. walk about a mile for it to cool down. Watching it go through the heat process and seeing it float out flat is, is a crazy thing to see. Yeah. One of the wildest things I saw, because I had never even just, I hadn't considered it in my head, was the roles of low E coating. Um, I think I mentioned this, this has been, it feels like a year ago I mentioned this, but they had 10 foot tall diameter rolls of low E that they were rolling out. And if you understand how thin low E is, imagine how much material that is that's getting rolled out onto flat glass. It's, I mean, that's insane to think about. Yeah. Yeah. Many miles. They have uh, electronic scanners too, as it runs down, just like you would have in a tempering furnace if you wanted to see if you had any uh, flaws or nickel sulfide inclusions. But they have scanners as that float plant goes and they log everything to see the defects. And if it doesn't have so, so many defects within a square foot, they just let it go, but they log it. So if you end up having a piece of glass with an awful lot of uh, inclusions in it, air bubbles, little hairlines, um, have your supplier call the float plant and they'll log on. If they, if your fabricator keeps good track of the tags that come on it, they, they know when that glass was run and they look at the log of when it went down the float and say, yeah, you're right. It was in that, that batch and they'll replace the glass for you. It's an important, it's really an interesting. That is interesting. Yeah, them robots are watching everything. Yeah, it's just like a nice nice scan and it comes up digitally on a screen. There's like a control center that somebody's watching all these lines go down. At least Pilkington had it. I would imagine Guardian probably has it as well. Yeah, yeah the Guardian and plant, same way. Guardian, St. Cobain, all the big plants that have some decent money have a lot of that. And they have I to try it. Guardian has a... Uh, a th I think it's a three-day uh, glass class. Have you guys heard about this? No. Uh, for suppliers, I, I make IGs and we use Guardian. They've told me, uh, I think COVID got in the way, but they've told me that um, at some point uh, I'll be able to go and go through a three-day glass class. Uh, and part of it is a tour of the uh, Guardian float plant. Yeah, uh, I can't. I can't remember what what uh, town is that in, Billy? Rock Hill, South Carolina. It wasn't Rock Hill, the name that I'm coming up with, but I'm sure it's probably the same one. Yeah, uh, it's pretty much Charlotte. I mean, it's Greater Charlotte. All that area yeah. is Charlotte, North Carolina. But yeah. Anyway, I'd, they go through the whole history apparently, uh, and all sorts of stuff. Sounds interesting. It is. It is worth it a hundred percent. Like I said, I've been to manufacturers and those are interesting to see more for the people than the building when I go to the manufacturer because I'm meeting the people you talk to on the phone every day, uh, which is always enjoyable. But the flow plant was, I, it was kind of jaw dropping in some some aspects and that's that's hard to do when you've been around glass you know, since you were a kid. Uh, so you definitely, definitely hit that up. Yeah, that's one thing I never got to go to was a float plant. That's impressive. I went to an extrusion plant. That was really interesting. Tim? You have not been to a float plant yet. My brother got to go. I didn't get to go. Well, I can say I've done something that Tim has not done in class. <laughs> Why have you been to an extrusion plant? I have not been to an extrusion plant, but I'm sure there's a million things you've done in class that I haven't done. <laughs> so 
But I'm putting that on my LinkedIn tomorrow. But we used to go to a, I went to an extrusion plant over Modesto and, and watch these things come out like spaghetti and they just snap and they go straight. That was interesting, you know. Yeah, I use I used to extrusion Brazil back back in Brazil a while ago. Yeah. It's a interesting process. You have like a almost a hundred foot table after this the extrusion. Yeah. It's pretty much like a, a toothpaste with the diet at the bit, right? It just comes out all wavy. Yeah. Yeah, it comes down all wavy, and then you have like a stretcher. Yeah. And cut like in meters, six meters, which is going to uh, like 20 feet. And we put like into our oven, wait to like, a, yeah, you wait like to age it. We call it like aged oven for you let it there like for around six hours. And then uh, the aluminum got its strength again. Yeah. Right by the end. It's cool stuff, but. That's why we it's always like, when got 24 foot lengths of the storefront. They always had holes in the end. That's where they they pulled it. Tong marks. Yep. Interesting stuff. So the you other day, you were, to learn about storefront metal in the shower group tonight. Why not? That's yeah. Right. Anything can learn, happen in here. It's learn crazy. something too. So I I don't know about you guys, suppliers. So let, yesterday I ordered. Five pieces of quarter inch tempered flat polish all, two pieces quarter inch tempered flat polish all, and just some quarter inch tempered rake cuts. And they were here today. Wow. Overnight. That's not unusual for a quarter inch. Yeah, but quarter inch usually takes two days to get, but really? And flat polish all. When we were doing quarter inch, you had your order in by noon. You had it on the next day's truck. As yeah. long as you had it to us by noon. Yeah, but normally they were two days. And now it came, I didn't order it till like, what, four o'clock last night. Did you receive anything else other than a quarter inch on the truck? Uh, oh, yeah, I got some cut size 316 class. And, wow. Um, I can say are, we don't get anything that fast, even yeah. quarter inch or anything else. There's no chance. No. Uh, we got some IGs in, I think, about five days this past week, which was pretty impressive. Um, and I don't know why, because it seems like everybody has not enough people, but we re we did that. But yeah, I don't get anything that fast. We have one company near us that will turn stuff. They used to be faster than everybody else, but because of issues with employment, they aren't anymore. But they would turn stuff in about two to three days, which is really fast. But they were charging, you know, 20 to 30 percent more for their product because that was their niche was turning stuff fast. So well, yes. IG's, IG annealed, if we order like at noontime, I'll have it the next day. No chance here. And tempered, mm. that's another two days. I can make your IG's, Billy. It's just going to be a murder to deliver them. Yeah, right. That's, <laughs> that mountain in between me and you, it, it causes a lot of problems. Yeah. Well, just, just the distance, you know. <laughs> I actually went and got showers from Greg um, in Knoxville years ago uh, when we first met, but we because we were doing we were trying to offer you know same week showers, uh, and I could get them from Greg pretty quickly and get them back up here. But the the drive, you know, not even distance wise. I mean, it's about an hour and a half, two hours to him from me. But um, that mountain, that mountain is rough on vehicles running up and down there unless you're running big diesels. So yeah, it makes a makes a big difference. Especially in the wintertime when you start getting those slides, too. For those of you who are not familiar, between Asheville and Knoxville, Tennessee, there's a, about a 45-minute drive that is just straight, not straight downhill, very windy downhill down a river uh, between Asheville and Knoxville. It's a pretty pretty cool drive, like the first time you do it, but about the thousandth time you do it, it's not so cool anymore. Don't do it in a camper. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you well, well, you're going to do that again next year, aren't you? Not happening. And there was no snow either. Get I'm the big going. bus, you know. Yeah. You went and Bill went down the little mountain. Big didn't. Yeah. I don't think Bill went down the big mountain. He went down yeah. the one from uh, South Carolina to North Carolina. That's the that's that's the baby mountain. I won't say yeah. I told you so on this one, but this is recorded. So <laughs> that was that was the bunny slope. Huh? Bunny slope. <laughs> you didn't hear any banjos, did you? <laughs> I didn't want to stick. I didn't want to stick around. <laughs> In my mind, I heard plenty of them.
<laughs> so how's everybody doing on their hardware, charter hardware supplies, getting it? I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I get my stuff from Bill, so I'm good. Too. How's everybody but Bill doing on their shower hardware supplies? Yeah. But Bill. <laughs> it's a little, you know, it's a little sparse here and there. Like, um, uh, CRL still like they're out of stuff, you know, they're out of like just like SCU4s, like uh, brush nickel. I mean, I don't know about today, but I their mean, price are is going high so much. Well, it changes. Yeah. But they're they're more expensive now, even than portals. That's crazy, because portals has always been the standard of high prices. Yeah. Portals is good. Don't get me wrong; it's very good mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you and you pay, what you pay for, for it. right? Yeah, absolutely. I have no problem with that. They don't try and hide it. It is what it is. I'll be doing a job in, a job soon uh, for pivotal hinges black. The top hinge I got from FHC. The bottom hinge I ended up getting from a company in South in Florida, uh, SG, SGS. They match okay. You got and, it. Uh, yeah, uh. but I didn't have any choice. Nobody else has. Yeah. So, well, the great thing about door hardware is like the hinges and the handle aren't right next to each other. You know. Yeah. So. Yes. And, and also, Matt Black and Sierra Lawrence and Aura Bronze and Sierra Lawrence, you cannot tell the difference mm -hmm. side by side. Is that That's right? True. I don't think there is a difference. There isn't. Because I just put one in a day and you can, because of the clips are over here and the hinges are over here and the handle's here. You can it all looks it. the same. It all looks the same. Yeah. That's popular it, too now. People yeah. people really like that in that black. I did a I did a shower where it was all half inch glass, so I had to use a senior PPH02 and the PPH01, but the senior one, well, Cheryl Lawrence didn't have the the um, you know door to transom one in matte black. I got an oil run bronze and you couldn't tell the difference. For me, stuff to say, I'm a, I'm a bit color blind. So once I bought a, like a suit, I thought it was black. It was like then I, then I had I had a guy. He wanted matte black. And I go, hey, the stuff is out there. You know, it's way out there. But I get an oil run bronze. So he bought a piece of the the um, faucets over, and they look the same. That's good. You're lucky there. So we put an oil run bronze. You know? <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's right. I won't say I haven't done it. <laughs> well, all right. Hey. Hey. Good talk. Anybody topic, have something Chris. right before we quit? You're just dying to say? Go ahead, Vitter. Glad to be well, back, you guys. Yeah, just, just like to make a quick state here. I'm very glad to this group. It's been helping me a lot. And when, a special thanks to Brian. Uh, we're not too far from each other, so we're working uh, in a couple of projects together. He's, help, he's been helping me out a lot, and I hope that I can do the same for him. You got really it, man. A, yeah. Thanks, bro. <laughs> you awesome. got it. Let me I know did. when you're ready for that mirror. All right. <laughs> Don't tell me about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love to hear that. that me too. Uh, Chris. Yeah, good, good for I tell you every week. Good for you. <laughs> it makes yeah, my Bill. heart sing, man. Absolutely, <laughs> that's what this is for. It's great. <laughs> we were talking about it earlier, Bill. Before I think before you jumped on was the difference in this group and some others. Just you know the vibe. Mm. We all have enough headache in our day dealing with all we deal with. I don't want to come to social media to get shit on and mm -hmm. and catch a hard time. I'm here to. Maybe we give each other a hard time a little bit yeah. and have yeah. a good time, but I'm here to create relationships. You know, I've even talked to Brian about stuff, you know, just throwing some stuff about his area that I'm, you know, I'm not familiar with and he's helped me out. And I've talked to Chris about stuff. I talked to Bill regularly, you know, and it's, it's, it's an awesome thing that we've, we've hit on this before. Mm -hmm. um, there are nights when I get home and I do not want to do this because it's, it's late and I'm tired 
and I got kids running around and everything else, but I always feel a little more energized after doing it. So I, I agree. That's a great sentiment, Victor. I, I agree hundred percent. It's, it's good to feel a little bit rejuvenated about what we do every single day, knowing that everybody's dealing with the same crap and we can help each other out of that, like that crap a little bit. There you go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I right. second that. Yeah, I agree. And this yeah. is, uh, this is helping me up my game. There you uh, go. For sure. Mm -hmm. So all of us, all of us. All right. Yeah. Good night. Good night, guys. Thanks, Chris. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. See you next good night, time. Guys. Good night, guys.